All right, welcome back. Uh, this is uh, part two of pediatric bone tumors. Uh, we're going to finish talking about the different types of bone tumors, which are commonly found in children and in young adults. Uh, last time we just ended with talking about non-ossifying fibromas or fibrous xanthomas. We'll finish up talking about the uh, other main fibrous lesion, which is fibrous dysplasia. Uh, fibrous dysplasia is not really a, a bone tumor per se. It's more of a developmental anomaly. Uh, the osteoblasts in the bone don't quite develop properly and you end up with this uh, long area of abnormal bone. <clears throat> and uh, this typically occurs when it's monoostotic as a long segment lesion uh, in a long bone. That's the classic appearance of fibrous dysplasia. Um, though it can be, uh, it can look like many different things and it can occur in uh, all kinds of uh, bones. Uh, the picture on the right here is the uh, classic shepherd's crook deformity, which you get with long-standing fibrous dysplasia. Uh, the uh, femur is kind of bowed out and resembles the uh, crook of a you know, stereotypical ancient shepherd wandering some Ionian hillside. Um, so this is what a shepherd's crook deformity looks like. And you can see here this uh, geographic uh, lesion, which is this ground glass appearance to it in places uh, throughout the uh, proximal femur. Uh, it's got a narrow zone of transition to it, a typical appearance and location for uh, fibrous dysplasia. Uh, in fact, Anytime you see a lesion in the proximal femur, you should probably at least entertain the possibility of fibrous dysplasia um, just because uh, it's a common uh, place for it to occur. So something to think about uh, in the uh, proximal femur. Think about fibrous dysplasia for things that look there because it can look sclerotic there as well too. Next up, we'll talk about cystic lesions of the bone and uh, the two we'll talk about are aneurysmal bone cysts and unicameral bone cysts. Aneurysmal bone cysts are uh, the one that's not really a true tumor. Uh, these can be acquired, for example, after trauma or grow within another tumor. Uh, and all they really are are collection or collections of blood, blood-filled cavities, which slowly expand over time. Uh, typically, they uh, originate in the metaphysis and are eccentrically located, though by the time you see them, they may be so expansile that uh, you will no longer be able to tell that it was once actually eccentrically located. Um, these will continue to grow and expand and so are, are treated because uh, they just won't go away. Uh, unicameral bone cysts are simple, really just simple cysts. Uh, they're uh, traditionally located in the metaphysis, are centrally located, uh, and look very benign, either geographic 1A or 1B lesions. Uh, we see this one right here, this geographic lytic lesion with a narrow zone of transition, non-sclerotic border, centered in the metaphysis of the uh, proximal femur. Obviously, again, we can see there a child. Um, if they fracture, you'll see the classic fallen fragment sign, which is uh, pretty much pathognomonic for uh, a unicameral bone cyst. Round blue cell tumors, well, um, which include lymphoma, leukemia, and Ewing sarcoma, these pretty much will all look alike, and uh, it's probably impossible to differentiate uh, on them um, radiographically. Um, they're all going to be infiltrating tumors that grow throughout the bone. They classically appear as permeative lesions. Um, uh, they'll be associated with an aggressive periosteal reaction. Uh, this is an example of lymphoma. Uh, it's very hard to see the actual lymphoma in the bone itself, but you do see the uh, periosteal reaction, this laminated periosteal reaction associated with it. Uh, when you MRI these lesions, often they'll be very well demarcated and geographic, um, and that's one of the hallmarks of lymphoma on MRI in the bone. They can be hard to see sometimes on the radiograph, and your clue may be the periosteal reaction. Leukemia, pretty much the same thing as lymphoma. Um, there's no really good way to differentiate them. Um, on imaging, this was an example of a leukemia. In a child, they see multiple lesions. This is a post gadolinium uh, MR, uh, and these are all leukemia infiltrates. Ewing sarcoma, again, another round blue cell tumor. Uh, it's typically located in the diaphysis or the uh, metaphyseal diaphyseal region. Classically, as a permeative lesion associated with aggressive periosteal reactions, we see here. This was a case of Ewing sarcoma. Tend to occur in, say, around the age of 12 or so, though they can occur in younger kids and elderly as well, too. Uh, in older uh, kids or young adults as well, too. But really, again, uh, hard to differentiate these between uh, lymphoma and leukemia. Miscellaneous lesions uh, include osteomyelitis, uh, Langerhans cell histiocytosis, uh, and uh, metastasis. 
which we should put in there just as a uh, side note, uh, mets are pretty rare in children, but obviously if they have some kind of malignancy such as a neuroblastoma or a Wilms tumor or something like that, um, they can have metastasis to the bones. This is an example of a <clears throat> osteomyelitis, which shows this geographic lytic lesion with a central bony sequestrum. Um, Langerhans cell histiocytosis would look uh, just like this as well too, so it can be uh, hard to tell apart. Um, radiographically, but this was an example of uh, osteomyelitis with a bony sequestrum. This is another example of osteomyelitis. Here you can actually see the, the tract uh, coursing through the bone, uh, going across the physis and uh, involving the epiphysis and the metaphysis as well. This kind of tract where the uh, infection was tracking uh, through the bone out into the adjacent soft tissues. This was a case of TB. TB is um, one of the infections to think about in kids. Uh, this was a case of TB dactylitis. Uh, you can see right here this uh, geographic lesion, <clears throat> which has a wide zone of transition and this uh, periosteal reaction associated with it. Uh, there's probably another focus of involvement right here in the thumb. Um, classically, uh, you'll see that in, in, the, in the fingers, they'll look expansile. Sometimes you'll see this aggressive periosteal reaction with it. And you may see uh, lytic lucencies within the bone. So uh, TB dactylitis is something to keep in mind as a, a type of osteomyelitis. Langerhans cell histiocytosis, this can look like a lot of things, but one of the classic features is this uh, geographic lytic lesion with a bony sequestrum. This looks just like a Brody's abscess a lot of the time. It can be very hard to tell apart. Uh, I don't think you could say this is not a Brody's abscess. You're going to be stuck giving a differential in this case but that's one of the appearances of Langerhans cell histocytosis. Uh, look for other areas of involvement in the bone because it may be multifocal, uh, and they may have involvement in other organ systems as well, too. It doesn't just affect the bones. This is the classic example of what uh, EG, or Langerhans cell histocytosis, looks like in the skull. You see this kind of scalloped margin from the, the lesion, and there's a soft tissue component uh, of it as well here, too. On the radiograph, uh, typical appearance of EG or Langerhans cell histocytosis on the skull radiograph, multiple punched out lytic lesions throughout the skull. Uh, you see this in a kid like this, it's really just EG, EG, EG. Those are your top three main differentials. If you saw this in an adult, you're going to say something different. You're going to think multiple myeloma uh, and then metastasis. Uh, but in a kid, typical appearance of Langerhans cell histocytosis or uh, EG, eosinophilic granuloma.